Hi there. I am live and we are doing a collection overview tonight, which I thought would be fun. From 1985 to 1995, there's a little company called Video Treasures. Now, Video Treasures put out a lot of really cool stuff, uh, particularly on VHS, uh, 1985 to 1995. Now, after Vi Video Treasures kind of became one to make a new company called Anchor Bay. And that's what we're looking at tonight is, the, is Anchor Bay. Anchor Bay was a really, really good company when it, uh, when it started up. Basically for a lot of North Americans, Anchor Bay was how they found out about Hammer, how they uh, found out about uh, Dario Argento, how they got Evil Dead or Halloween or one of the Halloween sequels that Anchor Bay had the rights to. Usually I think it was like uh, four, five, three, four and five, something like that. Um, but I have a, a little collection of Anchor Bay and kind of wanted to, because Anchor Bay eventually would get bought out by Stars in 2004. And if you've uh, never seen Star, never heard of Stars, that's, uh, they're, a, they're the company that ruined Anchor Bay. Um, they sincerely ruined Anchor Bay to the point where later on Stars would get bought themselves by Lionsgate. Actually, I think that was last year, the year before last. And now Anchor Bay is a shadow of its former self. But there was a time, there was a period, when, much like what you think about the uh, the vinegar syndromes, the arrows, and the scream factories, and the severns and snapses, and the blue undergrounds, uh, you would be excited. Hey there, uh, you you would be excited to hear that an Anchor Bay release was coming out. You would go, you would be lining up in the in that store, to actually uh, to get uh, some uh, some Anchor Bay stuff. So I've got my Anchor, I got my complete Anchor Bay collection here. I, I got a few of them, so we'll go through them. We can talk about some movies. You can give me some of your your thoughts on uh, on Anchor Bay, and uh, if you ever collected them, if you collect them now, um, if they had like a, a, a big part. Oh, I would. I really would love to see yours, Vinny. Actually. Hey, Kathy, Mark, reality. Hey, Vinny. <clears throat> Yeah, I've been thinking about it a lot because recently uh, it's just one of those companies that that was big with me. Now, I don't have a lot of like uh, Blu-ray stuff for Anchor Bay, so I'm just going to go over that really quick. <clears throat> you, really? And, but it's the DVD stuff with Anchor Bay that is really interesting, to be completely honest with you. Because they put out a lot of really cool titles on DVD before Blu-ray came around. And that's where you're going to find the gems for Anchor Bay at. You'll, there's, they put out some cool stuff on DVD and Blu-ray and stuff, but the real cool stuff was before when they did like a lot of their DVD stuff that never did get transferred over to Blu-ray. Um, a lot of it didn't anyway. So I'm going to go through a lot of that, but quick, I'm going to go quickly through the three Anchor, Bla Anchor Bay Blu-rays that, that I'm going to mention here before I'm going to go into what I consider the, the crown jewels of it, which is the DVD portion of it. Now there's four, but I'm a big chicken. Exactly, because usually the features are different uh, when it comes to uh, to those, and, and they lose features. Ha same thing happened when I got my uh, my Amityville Amityville box set uh, from uh, Screen Factory. I made sure that I had that extra disc that came with the uh, you know when you when that MGM put it the the first three, they put like a bonus disc called Amityville Confidential. I made sure that I got that because that had like these documentaries on it, like History Channel documentaries that weren't available for the new uh, Screen Factory disc. <clears throat> Today I'm wearing a Pokemon shirt, <clears throat> which I'm super proud of because I, I love Pokemon. So, there's a fourth Anchor Bay that I didn't bring over. It's a spider one called Camel Spider that my better half bought for me. But I had an experience with a spider recently that freaked me out. So, that, that Blu-ray, you can imagine that Blu-ray. You can Google image it because I'm not putting that one up here right now. Just saying that. <clears throat> Alright, so first up is Freaked. And I really do like this movie. I think this one's underrated. I'd like to see this one get like a really good edition. Um, this one here, this one is, a, is a, there was like an edition that had like a bunch of features on it. Uh, this isn't the one. This is pretty much like the kind of the bare bones edition of Freaked. So if, you're, if you've never seen this movie, it's actually really, really fun. Uh, Alex Winter from uh, Bill and Ted's, you know, Excellent Adventure and The Bogus Journey uh, stars in this one. And it's got a great cast. you got like Randy Quaid. Mr. T has the bearded lady. I'm not joking. Uh, Bobcat Goldthwait is in this. Keanu Reeves does a uh, does an uncredited role. <clears throat> the two disc special edition is a good one. PlayStation. That's the one I have. 
but I was I was able to find it. Like you know, there's Megan Fort Fairchild, uh, you know, Morgan Fairchild, Megan Ward's in this. Hey, Paul, we're talking Anchor Bay tonight. But uh, freaked, and it's a movie I really like. So next up is one that I bought from my better half, and that is an Anthony Quinn film, and that is the uh, the message, which actually is a really good um, kind of a period film. It's kind of like. Uh, I guess maybe in a way it's kind of like the, you know, the greatest story ever told, uh, you know, which, you know, is a Christian film and the message was like an, um, was, was a Muslim film, a Zen film. Um, and it's actually, what's really cool, and it has a horror connection, wouldn't you be surprised, uh, because it's uh, produced by, uh, did he direct it too? Yeah, it would. Mustafa Kad. So this was directed by Mustafa Kad, the guy that would bring you Halloween. Next up is... We had the rare blu I don't actually. I did, uh, but I gave it away. I didn't even know it was rare. Uh, <laughs> uh, is uh, Clive Barker's Hellraiser, which is not rare. Uh, <laughs> but this is the uh, Blu-ray edition of Hellraiser that came out, and I, I kept it, even though I got the set. Uh, I think there's some different features on here. There's actually a few features. Uh, pretty well done with this one here, and I did like the way that it was. It's an early, you know, Anchor Bay Blu-ray. Never going to be worth anything or anything like that. I, I just keep them because I, I collect them. I'm glad you didn't. Oh, I love the Scarlet Box set. Beyond. I never did. Yeah, I know. I forgot about that. All right. Let's get into the crux of it. Now, some of these were, uh, were actually given to me, which is actually kind of cool when that happens. I got to put this here so I can see you guys stuff. So... The, remember the game Dead Space? You know, the one that Argento actually had a part of the first one up? So they made a couple, like, <laughs> uh, a couple, like, animated films for uh, for Dead Space. And Anchor Bay put them both out. Uh, and they put a, a Dead Space Downfall. It's the prequel to Dead Space. And then they put out a Dead Space Aftermath. I'm not sure if there's any more, but uh, these two were given to me. Hey, Danny. <clears throat> Interactive menu, yeah. <laughs> Special feature, interactive menu. <laughs> Next up is uh, a, f a fun one. It's, uh, it's an Agatha Christie film. Cast and crew of filmographies. All the great stuff, right? Theatrical trailer. <clears throat> Run time in the A with some good games. Endless Night. Uh, it's actually a pretty cool cast in this one. You got Haley Mills there. As you can see, her... Uh, George Sanders is in this one. Brett Eklund. Hey, Joseph, welcome. We're talking Anchor Bay tonight. Steel Gallery. You still get those, though. Except they've, they've, they've actually gone, like, more advanced. Okay, next up is one that I bought at Walmart that I'm... This is a kind of a, a secret favorite of mine. Actually, I, I enjoy it. It's been a long, I'll be honest, Vinny, it's been a long time since I watched The Endless Night. Uh, I like pretty much anything Agatha Christie. That's the, uh, that's, you know, that's kind of the thing. But if you like Agatha Christie, if you like any of the, like, the Perot stuff and like the murders, like locker room mysteries, that type of thing, you're, you're probably going to like it. Because uh, it is like one of the early ones where basically you get a star-studded cast, you put them in there, you kind of a Christie murder mystery type thing. I love that period, and I was hoping that uh, Murder on the Orient Express would would bring that back unfort it it did well but didn't do well enough to like to bring that genre back but it's the genre of film that i would really love to see brought back i'm really starting to get like fatigued in all the event films uh, I, I still like them i still love watching super films and stuff like that but i uh but i would love to so like to just to see like some some cool classic films like that Agatha Christie. oh the one with the wasp right yeah that was, that was a cool episode okay so if i say zombie and musical. Can you uh, can you put together what movie I'm going to show up next? They are doing a, a sequel. Actually, it's I think the one they're doing Death on the Nile. I think it's the one that's going to be done next. I think it's Death on the Nile, which actually is a really good one. Um, there's a there's a couple one. Uh, I love the Peter Ustinov ones. I'd love to see more of those done. Uh, like remake them all. Fantastic with new cast. So Dead and Breakfast. Uh, if you've never seen Dead and Breakfast, it's actually kind of fun. 
uh, with a, a great little like cast to it. And there's a sequence. Um, if you're a G4 fan, if you remember G4, remember when, you know, stuff. Is it really when you see? I, I like, actually liked it. And I think I bought the 4K, and it's one of the best looking 4Ks that I got. It is gorgeous. Uh, but I can understand why why I wouldn't be into it. But actually, I kind of I kind of get into it. I really did. But I'm starved for that type of film. So let's think like that. So does anybody remember Dead and Breakfast? This is fun. Uh, Zach Zone, I think it is, does the music in this. And there's a sequence where, uh, and it's a really cool, this song will stick with your head, stick in your head. There's a sequence where the zombies are coming to, uh, you know, coming into like the, the, like usual, people are kind of bored into a house and the zombies start to come. Um, and I think it's like Bill, what, Bruce Campbell's like nephew or something is in this film. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so uh, just as they're starting to come up, the this you know this truck with zombie with basically the the band the house band that was at the bar they got turned into zombies too so suddenly out of nowhere the band starts to play and the zombies do this choreographed dance i'm not even joking it's amazing it's awesome it's uh we're coming to kill you which is a cool song. trust me don't do it now after this video r write it down and go and write down you know we're coming to kill you uh Trust me, you, it will, it's an earworm of a song. It will get stuck in your head. A lot of fun. Trust me, it really is. <clears throat> Next up is Beastmaster. I'm a huge Don Coscarelli fan. You guys know I'm a huge Phantasm fan. It's one of my favorite franchises of all time. And I really did like Beastmaster. Uh, I thought Mark Singer was, was great in this film. Uh, obviously, I don't think he's as buff as, <laughs> as, the, as the poster is showing out there. But Beastmaster was a really fun film. And there's actually some really kind of cool, great features in there. And this one does actually have a, a cool kind of booklet thing. So see this here? So it opens up like this. And you get like the Beastmaster poster. Oh, I would love to have a really good Beastmaster Blu-ray, man. I think a lot of people will buy that one. Most <laughs> the actual film. There's a series, uh, Cinematech. Uh, Deathstalker, that's it. Uh, me and my friend, we would like laugh about the fact that we thought that they kept making Deathstalker movies um uh, Walt Disney films I don't know actually I'll check I don't think I do but I'll, I'll check to see um they, they kept making Deathstalker films to pay for the last poster that they did for Deathstalker because the posters of Deathstalker are way better than the films Deathstalker cheesy fun all right this one is coming out by Kino uh, in its original 3D and uh, so for both 3D and 2D, and that is Parasite with Demi Moore. And I do like this. That's a fun kind of cheesy monster film. Uh, they did a decent job. This one, again, this is an early anchor bay. You can see the amazing amount of features they had back then on those. But this was like the early days of like, uh, it's back to the VHS days when a cool car was all you need to sell the film. I remember the release Return to Oz. I, I, I got that oh, on VHS though. Uh, with the uh, clamshell case yeah, over there somewhere, but I'm not going into that room. Spider room tonight. <clears throat> uh, but I really, really do like this one. Special features, widescreen presentation. But as you can see, there's an eclectic amount. You're going to see some older stuff, newer stuff. Anchor, you can still find Anchor Bay movies. Usually, a lot of the ones that I find now, Kathy, though, are usually at like uh, at, at pawn shops or flea markets or stuff like that. And anytime I see anything. Uh, that I don't have that has an Anchor Bay logo on it, much like the MGM logo. Uh, I'll, I pick it up right away because I collect, for in, in my DVDs, I still collect Anchor Bay and I still collect MGM releases. So anytime I see either one of those, I, I grab them immediately. Next up is Cheerleader Camp, one that I think needs a good addition. I was kind of hoping Vinegar Center would put this one out or maybe like a Scream Factory or, 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 uh, or Arrow Video. I'll be glad with any company that puts this out except for well <laughs> just a couple of companies but uh cheerleader camp is one that i really like it's a uh, it's a comedy horror uh it's a but it's a great cast too like you got like betsy russell in this leaf garrett's here lucinda dickey was kind of like the go-to person for canon films you know the breaking films ninja three the domination <clears throat> and uh and laurie griffith is bonnie but again it's a it's a fun film and you get the uh the cool 
alternate like title here. So, because it was all the other title for this movie was Bloody Pom Poms. And I think it's kind of cool that although you get the, the cool cheerleader camp like artwork here, and I did have this actual the poster to this on my wall in college. Canon deserved more actually. Uh, <laughs> I know what you're talking about. He should not be named. Yeah, let's not give him any more press, eh? <laughs> but, uh, but anybody but. That's who I was talking about. You know that's what I'm talking about. All right, so next up is a, uh, a classic David Bowie film, uh, Rest in Peace, uh, and that is The Man Who Fell to Earth. And I actually really like this one. I love the... F I found this one at a, uh, at a shop. They, they sold, like, mostly VHS, and they had, like, a few DVDs there. So this is one of the ones that they that they had there, and it is a brilliant uh, little film. I, I love this film actually. It's not for everybody, but uh, I enjoyed it myself. Hammer Cannon, you can only keep one. It's going to be Hammer um, because I, I love Hammer, but Cannon is great. Uh, Cannon put out a lot of films that. Are more entertaining than they have any rights of it but uh i don't want to have to choose i, I want to live in a world where we don't have to choose that type of stuff right all right next up was one of the more recent releases put out by uh by anchor bay oh, well recent in, in a few years ago but that is wolf cop which was a canadian film that i actually really adore i haven't seen the sequel yet actually another wolf cop i haven't seen that one but i actually had a lot of fun with this movie i love absolutely love the uh the the special kind of trailer that they did with uh, trailer park boys for wolf cop if you haven't seen it check it out sometime it's hilarious uh or basically the guy from uh, I think the theater chain owner just tries to get the trailer park boys to actually like promote wolf cop but they keep getting the name wrong that would be cool and with the It'd be, that'd be, that's an actually a great idea, you know? So, as you guys know, I have the Scarlet box set, but I'm a huge Hammer, uh, Hammer, I am a huge Hammer fan. I'm a huge Hellraiser fan. So this is the Hellbound Hellraiser 2. Does it really? See, I was kind of nervous that, you know, can they do a sequel, but that's, that's, a, that's good, because I actually really do want to see it. I'm a big werewolf fan, and I like movies that are kind of silly. Oh, this one got all... Kind of bent out on that, but you can see the artwork there. Next up is one I don't remember. Uh, I remember that I watched it back when I got it, but I don't remember it right now. <laughs> so they're fun. I mean, like that's the thing. Not the newest ones. I haven't been really big in the newest ones. Um, but some of the ones in between, the one with the crooked cop, uh, the guy from like, I think One Tree Hill, right? The uncle from One Tree Hill. I can't remember his name right now. I'm sorry. My, since I've had the cold, it's been knocking me off a bit with that stuff. Uh, but he was like, he's really Craig. That was in this now, isn't that was in this is now? Uh, the movie with uh, this was right. Monty Keen is in this one, Left in Darkness. This, I think this actually might be a TV movie. It's by Stephen, Stephen Canal. Uh, so uh, it's been a long time since I've seen it, so I don't remember it. So that's, that's about as good as I can get with that. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I don't know. She, God dropped that so would she see people. Is that from that movie? <laughs> the first fourth Hellraiser franchise? I mean, there's something to be said for some of the other ones, too, that are fun in a weird, in a weird way. Hard Bodies Collection. Don't judge me. I, I like these films, actually. I think they're actually some of the better uh, in this town, especially the first one. Second one, eh, but the first one, definitely. Uh, and it does have, like, a horror connection as well. Uh, Darcy DeMoss is in it, and Courtney Gaines. So Courtney Gaines, of course, was in Children of the Corn. Uh, was it? Yeah. Uh, Darcy DeMoss, I think she was in, uh, well, she's in Form School Girls, but I think she was in uh, Friday 13th as well, part six, part seven. Uh, I can't remember which one right now, but I know she's in one of them. Uh, 
And apparently the 80s band Vixen. So if you're a fan of Vixen, there you go. Next up is Spring Break, which does have a horror connection because it is by Sean Cunningham. D Jim Jarmusch? <laughs> well, this is a pretty simplistic case there. Spring Break. Well, it's kind of like the 80s, kind of the sex exploitation, um, fun ones. Because I got a movie wrong last night, so I got I gotta I gotta try and redeem myself. So, in case you've noticed, my I'm goateed right now because I went to trim my beard and uh it nicked a part of my beard off, so gotta wait for that to grow back. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so next up is Silent Night to Deadly Night. They're expensive, man. I, after you like me messaged that, I, I went and I looked them up. Oh, Cinema Museum, they, they got gorgeous looking stuff, but holy crap, do they cost a lot of money. Uh, I'd love to have some of the releases, but I can't afford them. <laughs> That's the truth of the matter. Uh, I love, And they put out some really gorgeous stuff. I, I start back on my, on my job next week, so uh, maybe I can afford some more stuff then. But right now, it's, it's, it's been pretty tight, man. Silent Night, Deadly Night. Uh, this is the uncut, the uncensored one. And the coolest part is the Santa, aside from the film, is Santa Stocking of Outrage. Uh, if you own the film and you've never checked out the Stocking of Outrage, check it out, where they show like people's like angry comments about the film. It's a museum steelbook. Calling, oh wow, seventy dollars. Oh, the Hamdeville set. I, I trust Vinegar Syndrome to put out a, a solid, really good package for that set. I'm actually really intrigued because we've only seen the box so far. We actually haven't, yeah, Anchor Beta Night. We actually haven't seen the uh, the discs, the, you know, the cases themselves. Are they gonna are they gonna put four of them in there? Are they gonna put regular size cases? Are they gonna slimline them? Is the box set gonna have a number on its own? Is it gonna be numbered individually? Questions that have to be answered. All right. How so? This, no, I have the the uh, set. Digipack? I don't think, they've never done Digipack yet. I can't see that. So, this is the, uh, I think this was a Canadian release with these Horror Legacy releases. I had some people that actually, I'm pretty sure, was this, did you guys get this in the US? Because um, I had a couple of people when these came out <clears throat> that contacted me at the time that I, I had to get them some of these. They are like, the same releases, it just was a slipcover, but apparently some people really wanted a couple of slipcovers. Um, but I've got the, the Blu ray edition of that one as well now. <clears throat> Next up is a classic Maribaba. So, Kathy, if you're there, this one's gonna wake you up. And this is Shock. Now, for people that are getting the Vinegar Syndrome October set. Uh, here's the thing. Beyond the, remember one of the releases is called Beyond the Door 3? Well, this is Shock, otherwise known as, well, Beyond the Door 2, which has nothing to do with Beyond the Door 1, <laughs> just so you know. Those three films are connected by the fact that distributors thought Beyond the Door did well, and, uh, so they took Mary Baba Shock, they put a different name on it, called it Beyond the Door 2, and then they took an, a mock train and they called that Beyond the Door 3. So just don't worry if you're getting Beyond the Door 3 and you're wondering if you're going to be lost somewhere in a franchise in the third one. Exactly like Zombie 2. Uh, you're not. It's, uh, it's, so, but if you do want to get Beyond the Door 2, then there you go, Shock. Actually, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a good uh, Bava film, and, and it's highly underrated, and I think it's been underseen and under-talked about. It's one that I will talk about in the in the near future on this channel, by the way. I just got to rewatch it, revisit it. It's got Daryl Nickelodeon in it, John Steiner from, um, from Ten Tenebrae's in this film as well. All right, here's one I'm sure all you horror gore fans are going to know. That is, the, uh, is, that is Laid to Rest. So I love the cover for this one. 
Uh, it's a it's a gore fest of a film. It's it's fun. There's some like decent actors in there. You know, Richard Lynch, Lena Headey, like Jonathan Shea, Sean Whalen. So we got some great actors in uh, in Lady Dress. But it's uh, it is pretty much just a gore chase film. It, it's kind of what it is. Like I'll be honest, uh, there was a sequel to this as well. But uh, it's a fun it's a fun watch. It actually is pretty. It seems like yeah, about ninety yeah ninety ninety minutes. So it's, you know, see. Regular watch. If you like, if you saw Terrifier and like, it's better. I, it's, I think it's better than Terrifier. But uh, Terrifier for me was like, meh. But the guy that played the uh, Chrome Skull, right on, Rich. What well, was the uh, the clown was made up? And a third Wolfman was here to be tell you who that was because he interviewed him. So I was excited to get this one when I got it. Actually, The Incredible Hulk because has the two TV movies, The Incredible Hulk. Returns and the Troll of the Incredible Hulk. Of course, there would be one more TV movie that would come out called Death. Of, she is actually, she's in the second one, uh, called Death of the Incredible Hulk. But uh, this one here has the as Thor in it, and it has Daredevil. Now, if you've never seen these films, you may be like slightly unaware of what Thor looks like in the original Marvel TV universe. So let me introduce you to the Marvel TV version of Thor. So soak that in for a second. Chris Hemsworth, this guy. Are you ready for the Marvel TV version of Daredevil? Are you sure you're ready? That's actually better than Thor, to be honest with you. This is actually a pretty cool one. I actually do like Trial and Crow Hulk. Uh, John Rice Davies there is playing the Kingpin. And uh, they had planned to do like a. Uh... <laughs> I just thought. They actually had a little kind of comic book in there too. Well, not comic, but like made to look like a comic book, but it's actually a kind of a little booklet. And it's done in comic book style with panels and that. The Incredible Hawk TV series is s sadly underrated now. Uh, people really t rarely talk about it anymore, which is a shame because it did do some really great stuff. Did anybody hear about the new Peacock streaming service, which was announced today? Oh yeah, Nicholas Hammond actually, uh, from uh, The Sound of Music, played uh, Peter Parker in the original Spider-Man 70 series. That was... I actually, I, I thought it was fun. I mean, like, they didn't go too... It wasn't as good as Incredible Hawk, obviously. Uh, but it was okay. I like to own it, actually. I, I like to own the series. But I guess I better watch it on... What, does Disney Plus have the rights to that? So, yeah. So, Peacock is NBC streaming service. They announced that they are doing a updated, brand new... I love the Batman serials. They're fun. Uh, Saved by the Bell, in which... The only actors that are signed on for sh certain right now that, that they've announced are uh, is Mara Lopez and uh, Elizabeth Berkley. And apparently it has to deal with Zach Morris as a uh, senator or something like that. And uh, he sends uh, some underprivileged kids down to Bayside High because he's he messed up somehow. And uh, now then it's a culture clash between like the upper crust kids and the... Uh, and that I'm not, yeah, you know, I'm not even making it up. That's 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 what it's about. But there's also going to be a Battlestar Galactica TV series, headed by the guy that did Mr. Robot. So if you like Battlestar Galactica and you think there's more to add to it, Puppet Master versus Demonic Toys. It does sound horrible. Rich, <laughs> that's really horrible. I'm down with the Battlestar Galactica one though. That's the thing, Cinematech. You can't save because you cut the costs and they said, oh, I want to get this on this streaming service and this on another streaming service. Eventually, some are going to crash and burn. And there's, there's going to be, you know, Disney left to take over <laughs> some of the other ones because you know they're, that you can talk about all the streaming services. They can talk about Peacock and they can talk about, like, you know, I don't, I don't know, uh, QB or whatever the hell that one's called. The one that's doing the, uh, the new, uh, like, the Kiefer Sutherland 
uh, new series, uh, The Fugitive. They're doing a new Fugitive series. But uh, at the end of the day, like a lot of them aren't going to last. Uh, physical media, best way to go, dude. But Disney Plus is the one everybody's going to have. Like even over Netflix, eventually. You can just buy the box and for cheaper, they buy the box for cheaper. Yeah. Streaming services are spending a ton of money to, to get stuff like Seinfeld and like The Office and and Big Bang Theory, which I think is a huge mistake because that one's not going to, I don't think that one's going to stand the test of time the way a lot of them have. Um, but, uh, not <laughs> somewhere. See, I, I prefer, like, I got to own my stuff, man. I got to own my stuff. Maximum Overdrive, the original Anchor Bay edition of that. I love this cover, by the way. It's gorgeous. See, this is real. This is artwork. This is the way, the way it, should, it should be done. Some people thought it was a little bit too grotesque. If you want, like, another Marvel throwback right here, it's a Green Goblin um, truck. Now, Vestron did a great edition of this one. I, I think so. Poster art card. This will be the poster art card that's used. Stephen King's masterpiece of terror directed by the master himself. Which I thought was really cool actually. And I do love the disc on the inside just so you guys can see. I think that's actually a very cool way to do the disc. Right, it's the classic Doctor Who. There is actually, uh, it's BBC. Uh, <laughs> the, the, don't they have all the rights to the classic Doctor Who? Though I, I do recommend buying the Blu-ray sets as they come out because they got like the feature, the, the features on Doctor Who are incredible. I mean, it, put, it puts to shame any other like TV sets that are out there. Like there's no TV, no TVs. I don't care. Breaking Bad, nothing that has the the in depth like amount of like like the cross section of features that Doctor Who has. Hey George. All right. Next up is Take Me to Your Leader, Zach Morris, uh, Circus of Horrors, which is actually is a really cool one. Anton Differing. And again, I love this artwork. I'm not sure if this one is. And yes, this one actually does have the uh, the poster, and it's like uh, done like a, a lobby card style. I love the fact that a lot of these I want to have a trout in box. That'd be nice. A lot of trout is, is gone though. I mean, like it had to be uh, like re, you know, had put out a lot of the the ones that have been redone. So this is a fairly early uh, Anchor Bay release, then around '97. Uh, Anchor Bay started up in 95, by the way. Before 95, it was called Video Treasures. So if you got like a VHS and stuff with Video Treasures or some early Video Treasures DVDs, that's what pit, that's like that's what Anchor Bay, that's where Anchor Bay came from. That's the genesis of Anchor Bay. I think Video Treasures and Star Maker came together to really make Anchor Bay. Oh no, they'll eventually they'll re release them all eventually. They'll like do like either they'll they'll probably do like animated versions of the ones that are lost and use the audio that because there's audio for all the Doctor Who episodes. They're just not like video for all of them. The freaks uncut, but unfortunately the cuts. <sighs> this is my favorite like looking cover for Prom Night. Um, I mentioned earlier that you know I got the the North American like for like this set like with, with the four prom night films but uh there was a f another one that came out after the re after the remake of prom night came with the f with five films and that and that release actually uses this cover art for its uh for its dvd case and i think this is gorgeous gorgeous cover art it is creepy it's cool huh and yeah like the other ones this one actually does have the interior See, normally I don't like stop and show the interior, but like Anchor Bay just did such great jobs. 
I love the Arkham games. The third one is a bit iffy, but the first two I, I really liked. This is the interior right there. You want to see the disc art for, uh, for Prom Night? Because it's actually kind of cool. Because it is basically the uh, thing, but it's done in a very kind of... Isn't that kind of neat? I love the way they did that. You know, Prom Night. Anchor Bay has a ton of great stuff. So what do you think it is, Mike? I don't know if you're joking or if you just or you actually have an idea. So, but seriously, what do you think it is? <clears throat> I saw this movie a long time ago, Bad Boys. It's a Sean Penn film. I really enjoyed that one. It's by Rick Rosenthal, the guy that did Halloween Part 2. And I bought this one at a flea market. I really do like Bad, Bad Boys, actually. It's got a great cast. You know, you got Sean Penn, Ali Sheedy, Isaiah Morales. The Air Bud Defender. Okay, now I know you're joking. Uh, <laughs> I would love to see a prom night set, though. Okay, here's one that kind of got lost. In the, uh, it's, it's an action one, and it stars uh, Fred Dreyer, like ex-football player, would go on to star in the series Hunter, which was actually was a really good show, actually. Hunter... If you've ever heard, never heard the series Hunter, it was like a kind of a, a, a fun, gritty type cop show with a bit of like tongue in cheek humor. It was originally supposed to be like Dirty Harry the series, but they ended up changing the uh, the name to Hunter after actually. <laughs> you, there's a lot of extent I still don't have, so <laughs> probably not. That's one of those that I would I would wait till somebody generously donated it to me. Uh, I haven't even seen many of the AirPod films. Uh, Death the Before Dishonor. Which actually is a, real, is a fun film. If you like the, you know, the action films. I enjoyed it. Alright, and I gotta get the upgrade to this one. Uh, is this the one? I think this is the one that was shot in Nova Scotia. trying to remember I kind of think it is that is Defcon 4 I love this cover by the way it is gorgeous artwork look at that artwork I think that was shot here in, in Halifax I'm not here in Halifax I'm in North Sydney but I wish I was in Halifax I'm pretty sure this has got more shaking in it and It does, right? More chicken, yeah. Kate Lynch is in it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is Canadian. All right. Next up is a big one. It is the Sam Peckinpah commemorative two-disc edition of The Osterman Weekend. And I actually do like this movie. I think that this is one of Sam Peckinpah's films that don't get talked about a lot. I would love to have a Christmas horror box set. But I'll, I'll be just be glad to get like some some cool Christmas horror release for, for December. Oh, I would I would totally buy that. You guys know I love my my Christmas horror. A more recent Christmas horror film to check out, by the way, guys, if you never saw it yet, and I'm probably sure you did, is Better Watch Out, which is way better than I thought it was going to be. But does anybody have any love for the Osterman Weekend? Anybody? Anybody remember this film? You know, you got you know like Rucker Howard, Dennis Hopper, Burt Lancaster, Craig T. Nelson, John Hurt. It's a great cast. Um, it's a fun film and. It's one that got like kind of got lost along the way. Now, as you can see, there's like a 78 minute long documentary on it here. It's a really cool edition. Yeah. And there is like a fairly kind of like big booklet in here as well. What's my favorite Peck and Pop film? Uh, it's going to seem really like. A lot of people would say Straw Dogs. But, uh,. Or I guess some people would go with uh, what's my favorite Peck and Pop film? I really like Bring Me the Head of Alfredo Garcia. I think that was underrated. The one was more underrated ones, and I think a lot of that has to do with I'm a huge fan of the actor Warren Oates, so that one stands out. 
But uh, I'd have to go over it again. That's a good question. That's a really good question. Right. Yeah, it, 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 it's much better. I'm going to look because, you know, what's my favorite peck and pow? Ooh, I like that. You are on point tonight. I love when I get questions like that. Would it be the Wild Bunch? I don't think my dad's a straw dogs. I think my dad's a straw dogs. Um, but for me, it's not convoy. I know I'll tell you that much right now. I like the getaway. Maybe ride the high country, actually. Uh, I know it's like not <clears throat> not like typical Peck and Pop, but I'm a really big fan of Ride the High Country. So that's probably my favorite Peck and Pop film. You rock, because Bring Me the Head of Alfredo Garcia. Really under it. Uh, PlayStation 9. Back in the day, back in the days of VHS, I used to, uh, I used to sell VHS. And I would find like VHS that wasn't released. <clears throat> um, I'm kind of feeling better. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, I, I, and Convoy is one of those movies. Actually, Convoy wasn't released in North America for a long time. You couldn't find it. And uh, I used to like get like copies for people, like like not like copy off of the, off of the thing, but actually I'd send away to like places like Video Search Miami and places like that. And uh, I was going through like I bought like a a store that that had all their that were selling off all their VHS releases and I came across an actual like big box case for Convoy and I sold it for like a hundred and something dollars at the time uh, somebody like really wanted it back on back in the eBay days right so I'll always remember Convoy <laughs> and have positive thoughts on it uh, clockwise uh, John Cleese so if you've never seen this one it's kind of a kind of a fun release I haven't watched this one in a long time though Standard art. Okay, this one might play so well today, but I'm not gonna lie, this is a favorite of mine. Uh, I had the book from Scholastic. Uh, so this is, <laughs> uh, this is different. Sheila Keith is in Clockwise? I have to rewatch that again. I did not know that, man. You taught with me something today, I'll tell you that much right now. I love Sheila Keith, she's in so many Pete Walker films. Iron Eagle box set. You know, I'd probably buy that. I actually liked Iron Eagle. So, Zorro the Gay Blade with George Hamilton. I know, probably not the film that a lot of people... It's, it's a good film. It really is. Iron Eagle is Jason Gedrick and Lou Gossett, right? That's the one. I'm fine if I got it right. But this is a... Uh, I had the book, Scholastics, the, and for people that don't know, Scholastics is a, uh, the, there were Scholastic books, and you get like a, um, a, a four-page, like, kind of little thing uh, every month at, from, uh, from school, and you'd be able to choose. They'd have, like, book, you had to choose your Scholastic book order. And one time, I bought, like, they'd have, like, every once in a while, they'd have, like, for, like, 10 or $20, they'd have, like, different different ranges and you can buy like the scholastic mystery package and i bought the like scholastic mystery package and they had like i think like six books in there and i, I think one was the world's greatest athlete which was a uh jam uh, vincent you know walt disney it had condor man and it had zorro the gay blade so uh it was kind of cool and if you've never seen zorro the gay blade basically uh in it zorro uh is played well george hamilton plays both parts But it was so cool. I love Scholastics. Um, and uh, Zorro gets hurt, so his brother has to take over. But his brother is not so good with the sword, <laughs> so he uses a whip and he restylizes the Zorro costume and decides to, uh, that like the gold looks a lot better. And he has like the, the red one. It's, it's really fun. It is. It's cheesy and harmless. <laughs> in the newer ones uh, oh I used to love book fairs I live for book fairs man House of the Witch Doctor this is the one I actually bought at a Dollarama
Oh, welcome. <laughs> I don't have a lot to say about it because I don't think I've ever watched it, to be honest with you. Do you think they put that out? I just want a slasher box. <laughs> I really do. All right, so the next up is Day of the Dead 2 Contagion. It sucks, uh, but hey, it's a movie. And it's Anchor Bay, so I got it. I don't think I've ever sat all the way through it, to be completely honest with you. Because it really wasn't very good. <laughs> but uh, I, uh, you know, watched a bit of it. And this is one that I did enjoy. Uh, it's been a long time since I've seen it, but when I originally watched this one, I hope not actually. Jack Frost 2, I really am un unexcited about. I mean, I've got the DVD of it. I would buy it, I'll be honest with you. Um, but I wouldn't be like super excited about it. <laughs> Ask away. So, so The Dead, which actually is a decent release. All right, next up is one from Rue Mork. And I think this is the first film, really, Rue Mork Cinema. Hey, Logan. We're doing Anchor Bay, you know? Once Video Treasures, then Anchor Bay, then Bought by Stars, then Folded in Lionsgate. Rest in peace, Anchor Bay, but uh, they're still around, but a name only. But from, you know, from 1995 to 2004, Anchor Bay kind of reigned there for a bit. <laughs> You're stuck on Star Wars, dude. Uh, Neither. <laughs> Honestly, neither. I mean, Luke played his story out, Anakin played his story out, so just go do new stuff. Oh man, like, their, you know, their, their video treasure days were amazing. Then they came, you know, Anchor Base started up and they just it knocked it out of the park for the longest amount of time, and it's sad, like, what happened to them. The last one, Testament of Rosalind Lee, there's some of the later ones, of course. Ready to see a hammer one? All right, this is Stuart Whitman and Peter Cushing together. Uh, has this one got a, a good Blu-ray release? Because I don't think it has. Um, <laughs> and that is Shatter, which is, uh, I think this is one of the ones that they do with the Shaw Brothers, if I'm correct. I could be wrong, though. But I'm pretty, no, yeah, Michael Carreras and V. King Shaw. Yeah. So, yeah, this is one of the ones they do with the Shaw Brothers. Another one they did with the Shaw Brothers, of course, was the uh, Legend of Seven Golden Vampires or Seven Brothers, you know, versus Dracula, that, that one. Shatter. Shatter's, yeah, Shatter's right there. Uh, you got Monty Hellman, like, you know, uh, in this one, you got you have, like, Anton Differing, Peter Cushing, uh, Lung T from the Legend of the Drunken Massacre and A Better Tomorrow. So, you know, Great, you know, casting that one. And yes, this one does have uh, the uh, poster art for it here. Call him Mr. Shatter. I think there's over 200, like, uh, films that he actually released. Uh, you got to remember, Hammer started back in the, uh, I think, the 1930s, actually. Uh, the first film was, uh, was The Mystery of the Marie Celeste, and it had a battle of Lugosi in it. But Hammer became, like, more kind of, like, popular uh when when they're with, with their gothic era of uh, of films and cinema but they did a lot of stuff hammer did like like a huge array of films from the on the buses films we you know which were like on british comedies um i don't i love the boys next door uh brian it is that's got one of my favorite actors which is uh, maxwell caulfield actually maxwell caulfield and charlie sheen uh started that one together uh i'm a huge maxwell caulfield fan i'm a huge grease 2 fan I also loved Dynasty and Dynasty's spin-off series, which was called The Colbys, and which also starred Maxwell Caulfield. My favorite Christmas movie is Black Christmas. That, you know, that's my favorite movie, so it's still going to be my favorite Christmas movie. Uh, if uh, you want me to tell you, say, like, a non christmasy horror one, uh, it's probably Christmas Carol. But I also really like, uh, there's a lot of Christmas. I'm a big fan of Christmas. Did you really? That is awesome. Because uh, that is a cool film. Definitely, if you haven't seen it, let me know what you think of it. Oh, oh you've seen Oh, back in the day. Okay. So, all Hail Hammer. Hey, <laughs> Steven. Um, all right. 
Okay, next up is one that the first time I saw it, yeah, I can understand that. But that movie, solid by uh, by uh, Maxwell Caulfield. Did you really? Like, uh, no, it's the first time I've heard like that. He did like a lot of stuff, but he he had, you know, obviously like things happened to him and it's like a lot of things happened to him in the past. Like he had a troubled life uh, and, and it's a shame because he, he was one of those guys that was an extremely extraordinary actor and he never really got shut off. That is a great find. The Guardian. I hated this movie when I first saw it. Like, I saw this in the theater. I hated it. Um, it was totally unbalanced. Very much so. But uh, over time, I've actually grown to kind of like this film. Uh, Carrie Lowell is in this one. Of course, she'll become more famous for, like, the James Bond film. Yes, I know. I want that release so bad. Mind Games is the one you're talking about. Sour's Holiday Specials. Well, you'll be glad then, Ghostbuster guy. Or... Because they're putting out another Star Wars holiday special. And they're thinking about it anyway. You know that happened to me once. I when I bought, I was at a uh, at a at a, one of those sci-fi sci -fi conventions. Oh yeah, actually the uh, the I think it's uh, John Favreau that wants to do it. Um, It'll be very different than the other one, uh, but the uh, John Favreau wants to do a holiday special for the Disney Plus channel. One million years BC, or when dinosaurs ruled the Earth. Um, they're both really good, actually. Uh, although I really love Raquel Welsh, I'm probably going to go. Do I want oh, Raquel Welsh though? Uh, well, uh, let's go with when dinosaurs ruled the Earth. But I like them both. Repo Man, Evil Dead 2. There's another one, the Horror Legacy series ones. And so you can see the actual, like, the cover art from there. And I'm pretty sure this, ha yeah, it does have the uh, original, like, banner art there. These are some really cool releases. This was, like, in the late days of HMV that I picked these up. This is the George Romero's Down to the Dead release, which is actually is a really kind of cool release that opens up. I don't. I love Midnight Hour, Stephen. Uh, I remember seeing it on TV. Uh, it's almost Sherry Belafonte. Uh, great film. And I would love to see it get a, like, a new release. Oh, did I say Don? Day of the Dead. <laughs> I have Don did it too, but somewhere, but not, a, not under this one, I don't think. So really cool, like, like I said, I'm still getting over being sick, <laughs> but thanks for catching that. All right, next up is a Peter Sellers one, and I actually have, I didn't, oh, damn it, I got to bring over the box set, don't I? So I got the box set that this comes in, the Peter Sellers collection. This is the smallest show on earth. Oh, the original Day of the, not the new Day of the Dead, but the original Day of the Dead, yes. Uh, it's actually really good. And this is, these are like the early, some, some really good Peter Seller stuff. Um, all right. <laughs> this is Phantasm 3, Lord of the Dead. It is a really cool book with all those artwork. It's kind of reminiscent if you've, Got the second sight like edition, especially the steelbook edition, of uh of Return of the Living Dead. It's kind of similar to that. Let's see, it does it use different art? No, it's used the same art, so. And uh, this is the cover for Phantasm 4 Oblivion. I know Kathy's excited about this because the box that's coming out. Get this over here. All right, come on. Let's 
Let's move over there. <laughs> oh, really? It is a good film. It's a really good film, actually. This is The Case of the Bloody Iris. This is part of the Giallo collection that uh, that they put out. And Case of, the Bloody, Case of the Bloody Iris is a really good one. I know. I was actually surprised by that. Actually, yes, she did get a Rero. I know she got it. <laughs> I can answer that one for her. Uh, Next up is a re it was a really good Halloween release, and I can I can never bring myself to get rid of this. I actually love this release. This is a H25, uh, the 25th anniversary of Halloween. The Div Max, and it's the uh, it's the two disc edition with the with the book. Comes with the uh, you know the documentary and that. Really, really good set. Hey, Scudder. And this one has like, they would release the Halloween Cut Above the Rest documentary a, a couple times, uh, actually a few times, but this release here actually has the full length 87 minute version of the documentary. Whereas some of the other releases actually only had a truncated versions, like 30 minute doc versions of that actual documentary. All right, now we're getting into some. It did actually, Stephen. Uh, I'm not sure if, if you're not from the UK, right? Uh, but it was put out by uh, was it Studio Canal or Final Cut? I think it was Studio Canal, actually, that put out uh, the put out Frankenstein and the Monster from Hell. So it's got a Blu-ray release in the UK. I'm not sure if you got a region free player or not, but if you do, definitely check it out. So. Don Coscarelli's Masters of Horror episode, Incident on Nafa Mountain Road. This is one of my very favorite episodes of Masters of Horror. I was really excited to get that. And yes, it does have the Masters of Horror trading card in there. I love the fact that Don Coscarelli has a trading card. I'm a huge Don Coscarelli fan, guys. Unfortunately, not all of these. Oh, well, dude, the, there's no one thing you're going to learn here in Movie Club and welcome is that there's never an off-topic thing. We talk about everything, and that's the, that's the beauty of it is going down all those twisty, turny roads. Do you mean the one that Scream Factory put out? Unfortunately, pretty expensive now. Like, keep an eye on eBay for like a copy of it. If you want like the big ed edition, the big box that I got, that's going to cost a lot. Uh, you might be able to get the more truncated box set for a little bit, a little bit smaller, because uh, one I got is a 15 disc one, but there's a 10 disc one uh, that uh, that they put out and used to go, you know, it used to be in Walmart for a while for fairly cheap. <laughs> Off topic is the topic here. That's true. So I just showed you the instant on off mountain road, but I also got uh, instant on off mountain road with chocolate, which actually by Mick Garris was actually a pretty good one. <laughs> we did that, didn't we? We're talking about Vinegar Syndrome, then we're talking about Van Halen, who the best singer was. The big one. If you can get the big one, the 15 disc one, that's the one to get. Like, hands down. This is Cigarette Burns, well, John Carpenter's one, and it does have, again, this one luckily had the, had the John Carpenter trading card as well. I've got a Sunrise record, Stephen, about four hours away from me. My kids live right next to it. Uh, they actually have been gone to Sunrise two weeks in a row now and have teased me by taking pictures of Sunrise records and all the releases and sending them to me. So, But if I see something really good there and they're going there, then they got to tell me so I can get them, send them the money to pick me up something. I love Sunrise records. Unfortunately, uh, it's not close to me, but the one in, uh, in Halifax, because I'm in Nova Scotia, is, a, is really, really good. And the guys that work there are awesome. This one has a character, too, right? Yep. So Stuart Gordon's Dreams in a Witch House, which is a unique one. Which also has the Stuart Gordon trading card. Uh, 
best Halloween box is all black cases. Yeah, that's the one, the 15 disc one. I can show it afterwards to you. This one doesn't have a card. Next uh, is Clive Barker's Hackle's Tale. Followed up by the single release of McGarris's Chocolat. And I do have the McGarris trading card. You want the, oh, the set is so cool. Okay, that set was so nicely done. Then there is the Dreams in Witch House. Do I have that one twice? I do actually. Uh, with a slip cover though. But this and another Stuart Gordon. I've got two Stuart Gordon trading cards as well. Collect them all. That's a good idea. The orange cases are actually kind of cool. I got a couple orange cases over there. I'll, uh, I'll show you what they, uh, what they look like. Actually, remember that one Camel Spider that I mentioned at the beginning of the video? That's in the orange case, ironically. And then there is the uh, classic Joe Dante one, uh, Homecoming. The tomb set. The tomb set's really nice. And then they put it like a skeleton set for the second season. I, I'm i trying to search them out if I ever find them. I'll show you guys on here. And this is the Ka Takeshi Makai, and it had like a Takeshi Makai trading card. Do you know which one Takeshi Makai did for... Uh, for Masters of Horror, it wasn't in the original uh, like series. It was like kind of like the the extra one, and that is Imprint, which is actually really good. And it's got Billy Drago in this one. Um, pretty sure it's got Billy. Yeah, it's Billy Drago. They're hard to find now. With a gold case, that's kind of cool. All right, I got a few more. I just got to get over to them. All right. Okay, try not to fall. Try not to fall. Both me and the movies. All right. All right, all right, all right. Chat away as I maneuver this. As you can see, some of these have doubled over, <clears throat> and the reasoning for that is pretty base. It's that when I get like a new release of one of these films, I try and I grab it. I'll grab any anchor bay that I can find. So if like uh, one comes out that I've already got, sometimes I just don't know. It's not one of the ones, is it? I'm making a mess, guys. <clears throat> All right, here we go. So there is, so again, one of the newer ones is Monster Brawl. Which has a Kevin Nash in it. Then speaking of like wrestling horror, there is WrestleManiac with Rey Mysterio Sr. Which was actually the very first film that I watched with my uh, with my now better half before we were even together. This we watched this movie together, <laughs> and she still decided to to date me later on. So yeah. Okay, next up is Hatchet, unrated director's cut. Again, this is a. I'll leave that one to the last, I think. And then there's a Quicksilver Highway. Which again, is another Stephen King. Stephen King's really popular now, so you know. This is McGarris too, right? Yeah, McGarris. It's been a long time since I've seen Kit. What's the worst... Good question. What's the worst first date movie? For I can tell you what the worst first date movie that I ever saw on an actual first date was. Do you want to know what the, the worst, my worst first date movie? And uh, it was in the VHS days. And I was uh, going on a date. And I went to, uh, and I went and I, I had picked up like four or five different VHS. And it was like uh, basically ones that like a friend had given me like, and they copied some stuff onto 
onto like three or four of these VHS ones. So I told the girl to pick up something to watch. We'll watch it, have a fun, you know, kind of a late evening. Uh, she said she liked horror, so I brought like a horror one. I had like three or four horror on there. So the movie that she chooses to watch is uh, Last House on the Left. And I can tell you, that was awkward. That was really awkward. So, yeah. Beat that first thing movie. I guess the next uh, most awkward one is watching WrestleManiac. Still not as bad as Last House on the Left. <laughs> next up is Silent Night, which actually is a really good remake and one that I really enjoy. Uh, ending was kind of blah, but the movie I'll throw aside from that, pretty cool. So they're like, say, oh, that's, you got to go in there, Dungeon Studio. That, 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 that'll, that'll do it. Next up is a Corman's World documentary, which actually is a really fun documentary. If you ever get a chance to watch it, definitely do it. Cannibal Holocaust. All right, you're staying for later. Certain ones I'm putting down here for later. I'm going to, oh, I'll do these later. Or I'll do these last. Here's a neat one. Okay, so this is the Lucio Fulci Collection Volume 2. I got this one. Um, and it has Manhattan Baby. <laughs> but the kind of neat thing about it is this was uh, bought, th my dad got this one at a uh, <laughs> uh, at a at a uh, flea market basically that he was doing, and he gave it to me because both of the discs weren't in there, right? But uh, what was in there? So there is Manhattan Baby, right? Which is the the disc on. And that should be New York Ripper. But instead of that, there's this, which is a Scream Factory DVD for Life Force. Manhattan Baby is fun. It's not, not his best. But uh, Life, this here, additional Life Force, is now at a print. Actually, if you buy the new Life Force now, uh, there's uh, kind of like features that are on, that's on this, that isn't on the new Screen Factor Edition Life Force. He actually lost the rights to some features and had to kind of pull it. So uh, I was actually kind of stoked because I'd already bought the Arrow Edition. So, but to find this one kind of like as a freebie and a set, kind of cool. <sighs> Interview with Dardanos Siachi is that was on the is on the Manhattan Baby one. I gotta watch that because I'm uh, gonna be doing some some Fulci for uh, my 31 Days of Horror. I will be getting my list out soon, guys. Any Chris? <laughs> oh, I, I, I just want to... How? <laughs> Trilogy of Terror with Karen Black. It's a crappy cover, but it's a great film. I get... 365 Days of Horror. I love New York River, though. But it's, it's just one of those that, that, I, that I just, like, super enjoy. Was that your only gel? Dude, I'm going to introduce you to some great yellow stuff. Come on, watch our Dario Gentle's Tenebrae. So this is from Trilogy of Terror. <laughs> quack, quack. <laughs> okay, we'll do this horrible one next. Uh, and this is the remake of Children of the Corn. Uncut and uncensored, like there's a lot to cut on that one. One of the <laughs> many, many editions of Evil Dead 2 that they put out. They put out so many editions of Evil Dead and Evil Dead 2. I feel like I've shown one of these. I feel like I must have two of these. Did I show an Evil Dead already? Evil Dead 2 already? I feel like I did. Maybe I didn't, but I just feel like I did. Oh, dude, I could never be as good as Tom Hanks, I don't think, but I wish. Thank you, though. This is one of the releases of... of I did, see, so I got two of them. I, I knew I got a few of these. Yeah, they did a remake. 
uh, Phantasm. Actually, this is a pretty cool release. I was so excited when I actually got this. I remember watching it, like, watching it and watching it over again. <laughs> yeah. Gary Busey. Uh, Gary Busey is an extremely good actor. He just went a little nuts in, in later years. Like, watch him in, like, the Buddy Holly story. He actually, like, does his own singing in that one. Incredible stuff. Uh, the Entity, and, which is uh, a cool release. And uh, there's a documentary on here that didn't make it over, I don't think, to the... Uh, Hurts to the uh, to the Blu-ray. All right, and I bought the double feature of Sonny Deadly Night. At the time, it was the only way to get Sonny Deadly Night 2. And I love the fact that they each had their own disc. And that Sonny Deadly Night 2 had like an actual like uh, actual features, like a commentary and stuff on it. And I've since, you know, picked up the Silent Night, Dead Night 3, 4, and 5 from Lionsgate. Next up is a very underrated zombie film, which I really liked, and that is The Battery. Uh, it is a pretty much a two-person type of film, and it basically deals with the loneliness and isolation that would happen if you uh, really were into a zombie thing. Not so much the action, but kind of like the loneliness of it. What film do I own the most editions of? <laughs> Maybe Evil Dead too. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I own a few of uh, Black Christmas, actually. My five favorite actors. I'll come back to you on that one. I'm going to do a five favorites list. I'm actually, uh, I'm actually going to do a Q and A video, uh, like an actual Q and A video down the road. So I'll be answering some of those there. Uh, and it's the, the ending is one that's like definitely it's it's a it's a good it's a good film and a good watch. I can, can be a bit rough for like some people. I think. I love John Waters. Black Christmas three times on, on Blu-ray. Wow. Is which one anything like Rubber? Uh, Battery? No, no. Battery is pretty much is a is is a uh, a zo like these two guys and their friends, um, and they're stuck, you know, in the middle of a zombie apocalypse and like how they how they survive and, and how they feel, uh, what goes on th throughout. It, it's it's incredible. There's one sequence that's pretty memorable um, that I, I won't get into right now, but. Uh, the fact is that they basically uh, there's a one where the guy is stuck in a car and zombies come around the car and I won't go into what happens but you have, you have to see it but uh, it's something you don't expect to happen in a zombie film happy birthday to me and of course got the blu-ray this one now but I uh, it'll be my well first in a long long time um, it's harder for me to do a Q&A because unlike a lot of the channels I, I'm live all the time so you guys can ask me questions anytime um, yeah, I did see that. UK are putting it. It's a huge difference too. Like there's a there's a, a big t like time difference between the, the theatrical cut and the director's cut. Um, that's what. See, I would get that edition of of Midsummer because um, I'm not going to buy the one where over here where it's like, you know, where it's just the theatrical cut. Next up is the Night Stalker and the Night Strangler, which of course I've already upgraded to Blu-ray because Kino put out great editions of it, and if you don't have them, pick them up because they're really really good. As you can see, it's a good thing I did because when I got this, do you want to see like how scratched and stuff this is? Not sure if you can tell from there, but some pretty big scratches on it. Oh, really? You saw the director come theater? That's all. So next up is Chud. That's okay. Man, Strang is good. And like a lot of the early ones, it has a really cool. All right, and the artwork on the disc is actually really cool as well. UK release Midsummer, yeah, 147 minutes for. Oh, really? 171. Holy crap! Young Han Solo. I didn't hear about the Young Solo one. I, uh, I is the Darth Maul one? That's still like a rumor, right? And Darth Maul one. Not most people do dungeon, but I actually I'm I'm kind of the same. I like them both. I really do. I think there's more of a or an actual gut punch when it, with with Night Stalker and actually in the actual character. But I love the uh, the underground sequences for Night Strangler. I think that's really well done, and uh, it, it's cast so well. It was a great follow up film, and I just wish that the uh, Norlis tapes 
which you know kind of spawned all of it would get like a, a good release as well i'd love to see kino get like get the norlis tapes and put that out, that out on blu-ray so up is the original stepford wives oh wow really i'm i'm a big fan of those The, idea, it's, the fact that this movie didn't do so well was, was the problem. And it wasn't a bad movie. It just got... Uh, people are getting a little bit like fatigued with Star Wars, I think. Kino's been very, very good. Like uh, in, in the last couple of years, they really upped their game like 110%. Um, but uh, I do think that Disney Plus will actually bring back Star Wars. The love for Star Wars. But Stepford Wives, love this movie. If you've never seen this one, it's got, it's got, dude, the box office proves me right. Uh, but uh, this one has like, uh, Ginger, yeah, Ginger. Kino is doing incredible releases. Just some amazing stuff. Of course, there is. Beyond the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon, which was way better than I thought it was going to be. I, one of these days, again, I'll do like, I'll redo like my Kino Collection overview and I'll show you guys what I got there. This is Happy Hell Night, which I haven't seen in a long time. I remember this being kind of meh, but uh, I kind of got to revisit to see like how it is. But I don't remember being like overly impressed with the one I saw it originally, to be completely honest with you. Invaders from Mars. I love the cool like silver editions. Yeah. I, I don't have any of their well, I got I guess their first like hammer one that they put out years ago was uh when they first started it was Vampire Lovers, but then they waited a long time, put out like some really kind of like cool editions recently. And Definitely worth looking into. Grave Halloween. I bought this at a uh, Dollarama. I don't know if I watched it yet. American Mary by the Soska Sisters, which uh, I actually really like this film. It's fun. Uh, of course, this is the girl, uh, Catherine Isabel. She is from Ginger Snaps, and she was in an episode of Smallville in the, in the early seasons. She's a girl that goes to a coma. Vish of Mars is really good. Return to Horror High. Scream to it actually is. Now Return to Horror High, there is no Horror High, just so you know. There is there, I think there's a movie out there called Horror High, but it has nothing to do with this. Return to Horror High was like a uh, kind of a comedic uh, film with George Clooney has a small role in this one. Uh, I actually gotta revisit this one again because I actually kinda liked it. I think I've got the invaders from ours like MGM edition as well there. There's been some amazing stuff coming out recently. All right. There is Dark Room with the Reed Diamond. And again, I remember seeing it years ago on, uh, v on VHS, but I don't know if I've watched it since I, uh, I got the, uh, the DVD. I, I can't watch everything. <laughs> so this is The Sword and the Sorcerer. I think that's... Is it him? Yeah, it's Leo Horsley from, uh, Ma from, oh, God, he did a series. Please be on the back here. No, of course it's not. That I used to really like. He played, like, this, uh, Matt Houston. He's Matt Houston. He played this, like, detective. Hey, welcome back. I don't think, no, Vestron Video, I think, is coming out with some more stuff. It's just they're really slow about it. Um, but to be fair, Synapse was for a while, too, right? Uh, I just hope, I, I just wish the price point better. And there we go, the complete musketeers, the three musketeers and the four musketeers. And I really like these. These are two Richard Lester films. And if you've never seen the musketeer films, they're, they're super fun. Uh, it's a really cool set. 
Okay, next up is Escape 2000, and this was a hard find, actually. Uh, this is actually the, out in uh, by Severin under its original name, which is Turkey Shoot. This is an exploitation film. Extremely fun, and I kept this in case there's features that aren't on the other one. I'm starting to get into exploitation, and here is the... Uh, Post art for Escape 2000 right there. This is nothing like what the movie's about, actually. Yeah, the original silver case. I'm proud of that, actually. <laughs> it was a hard find, man. All right. Something Wicked This Way Comes. Again, it's another favorite of mine. I think people just want to want if they're going to do Star Wars, just do original stuff without using the characters that are already established. She is the first one, yeah. <laughs> well, it's European. All right. So next up is a double feature. Was this a two disc or just one? No, one disc. And since it's her birthday, happy sixty eighth birthday. I do. You that one's coming up. Uh, Elvira is 68 today. Uh, well, the actress, Cassandra Peterson. And that's transforming 6 5,000, which is not a favorite of mine. But it, it's, it's cool. And here you see the Elvira poster on one side and the transforming 6 5,000 on the other. Which actually has some decent actors. I probably should revisit it and uh, see how I feel about it today. As far as the other double feature, I have Dead End Drive-In and Cut and Run, which is uh, Riagario Diodato. And this is a Brian Trenchard Smith, I think. Brian Trenchard Smith, right? Yeah. Uh, both fun films, but Dead End Drive-In is the better film. I have shown Halloween, and uh, apparently uh, it's here somewhere. <laughs> have I shown Don the Dead? It's, it's coming up. Next up is Fade to Black which somebody asked about. Yes, I do have the Fade to Black release. And it has the uh, cool art that would have been in the VHS. I would love to see Mr. Foss put out. Uh, is there somebody putting it out? I just hope it's being put out by a good company. Underrated film. So there's two left. <clears throat> wow, there's a lot of these. So first up is the one that everybody owns or should own, and this is the Ultimate Edition of Dawn of the Dead. This is one of the great horror releases ever put out. The Fair Dank Press. I don't have that one. This is a great film, though. De la Morte de la Mort. Uh, and this has all the versions of Don the Dead on. I'll open it up because it is a really cool looking set. But I'm sure everybody has this one anyway. Uh, it is a uh, four disc edition. Four disc? Yeah, four disc, right? Yeah. So you get the, you know, the theatrical cut, the European cut, uh, the extended version, and you get documentaries. This purchase is nice, and of course you'll also get in that a uh, the map to uh, Monroeville Mall and the Dawn of the Dead comic book. There's a lot of this for one movie, but it's a movie that deserves it. Oh, Day of the Dead Barbie, that actually looks kind of cool. All right, and my last Anchor Bay release to show you guys. It's kind of a classic, actually, I think, anyway. And it is Bad Taste. Peter Jackson's Bad Taste. You want to know the difference in limited editions now 
and limited editions back then. This is 1,429 of 50,000. Oh, did you really? That is awesome. And you open it up and it has like the, the two discs and of course the, the booklet in there as well. Did you really? It's probably, you know, they're like, oh no, we can't put that there. But it is a really cool film. Uh, still my my Peter Jackson like style my better half is a huge Lord of the Rings fan this is my style of Peter Jackson film <laughs> yeah Father's Day that's that's trauma actually they did it really good that's because that was when uh, what's their names oh god uh, the the Astron 5 guys right oh you're bad man <laughs> Star Trek rocks just putting it out there it's a fun one I mean like Bad Taste is different. It was like an early film by him. Like he did, you know, there's Bad Taste and uh, it, his early stuff was great and gory and fun and cheesy and exactly what you'd expect him to do. But that apparently is all my, except for, oh yeah, hold on. I always do this nowadays. So this is also Anchor Bay. All right. The Peter Sellers collection, which I gotta get in the light, which has Two Way Stretch, Heavens Above, Hoffman, which is actually pretty cool, I'm All Right Jack, The Smallest Show on Earth, and Carlton Brown of the FO. Earlier, more British style Peter Sellers films. You know, I probably have more. Like uh, Anchor Bay, but I uh, just those are the ones I found. Because after a while, I got tired of looking. Uh, but uh, but yeah, that's pretty much my entirety of my Anchor Bay collection. Yes, I, oh wait, you're right. Thank you. <laughs> there we go. So I have the Hellraiser limited edition tin. With, you know, the booklet and cards and stuff like that. And I also have the Halloween 5 limited edition tin. There was a... So inside you get like the, the card. I won't take the Hellraiser one out too. I'll just take one to kind of show you guys. I'm pretty sure I loaned out my Hellraiser uh, DVDs for those anyway. And there is the book. There's a pretty big book with it. And... Here is the, the DVD, it came like a kind of VCD style jewel case. And apparently the person that bought this originally, this was bought in Montreal, and I actually paid $57.47 for it. I remember when I bought it, it was like $10. Which I think is a good price for that. Good call on remembering the tins, because I totally forgot about them. I would like to find some of the other tins. My most sought after tin is the Halloween 4 tin. Out of, because I have Halloween 5. So I obviously want the Halloween 4 one as well. Was there a Halloween tin? I don't remember if there was. I know there was a Halloween 4 and Halloween 5 tin. But I don't remember if they did a Halloween tin. If they did that one really like. Over my head. But uh, that's my entire Anchor Bay collection. In, in under 90 minutes. So. Which is not bad. The sad thing is when I'm going to put all these away. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm, I am not looking forward to that. All right. So before I go on or do anything else, is there anything else you guys want to talk about? Because you guys got quiet. Like you guys got super quiet. And don't have any balls in there to juggle. So 
<laughs> so I can't do that. Are there any companies that you'd like me to see me do an overview of my collection of, like anytime in the near future? Uh, definitely, like, let me know. If... <laughs> Enjoy your evening, Dungeon, and thanks for coming in, man. I appreciate it. MGM. I can definitely do my MGM releases. I got a few MGM there. It'll take about the same length of time as this one here because I do have a uh, quite a few MGM titles. Uh, you know, everything from like, you know, from Dead Cert to like some of the Midnight, midnight movies to uh, to Cyborg or uh, or Class. Do I own any Corman? Yes, I do. I mean, uh, Kathy, when I originally started collecting again, one of the first like series is that I actually started collecting. Uh, I, I love Camera Obscura, but I don't have, have any other stuff. Your early steelbook release. Oh, Five Films by Darry Jan. I love that. Uh, I don't have it, but I know the one you're talking about. Shameless. I do have Shameless. Actually, I got a, a few of theirs, and I can do theirs actually uh, here. I can do a video on them. I, I love Shameless. Oh, Trimark. Or, I don't know what a, how I do a Trimark or, or Lionsgate one. Mo the, the problem with that, like, I really, Logan, you did a really good, like, vet, most variable kind of OOP one. But my problem is I don't know when, like, I've been here, like, showing movies and I'll pick something out. Uh, like, in the, in the, in when I did the, uh, the Vinegar Syndrome one. And apparently, Silent Night, Deadly Night, well, no, sorry, Slumber Party Massacre 2 and 3 is, like, super rare and out of print. I had no idea that, that that was the case with, uh, with that film. So, the only problem with me doing an out of print stuff is I can do some of it, but I, I, I don't know what's out of print. Uh, <laughs> Oh, Arrow did a great addition of video drum. Actually, it's over. Is it right behind me? Can you see it behind me there? Because they put it like there was like a kind of semi controversy over who did the better edition of video drum, and uh, that's the that's uh I like the Arrow edition, which is right. Right here, this is the Aero Edition of Videodrome. Well, they, they broke it up really. So video, the standard edition, well this is the, the as you can see, it's, it's a big edition. Uh, so the uh, standard edition would have like the, the disc itself, right? Um, but there was also a uh, David Cronenberg's early work, which actually is, was put out on a disc by itself, on a Blu-ray disc by itself, so you can buy it separately. Uh, what you're missing out on really is the, uh, is the hardbound book which is uh, exclusive to this one and uh i guess the packaging as well so this here book the uh, long live the new flesh was uh is what you'd really be uh really be missing out on so this is the this is the book here it's run let me see if i can give you a page count Probably about 90 pages altogether, really. And as far as like the write ups in it, I'll see if I can find them here. See if they have any. So, yeah, so we got like the, uh, they talk about the transfer. Then there's from the, they go through all the films. And then there's yeah, every one of them that they did here. Embryos for Visceral Vision by David Cronenberg, edited by Chris Radley. And, uh, just some really cool stuff on the on all the films there. Some decent Daily Eyes. Oh, I got Daily Eyes. Yeah, um, I didn't know that was out of print either. But uh, Daily Eyes, I guess Terry Train's out of print now too. I think uh, I picked up a lot of the early like the uh, early stuff. Uh, so this is the Arrow edition, and when they put it out on Criterion. Uh, I got that one as well. Where's it at? It should look like a. It should stand out because it should look just like a, a case. Here we go. Yeah. So this was the Criterion edition of uh, of it. But uh, the, uh, the Arrow edition, if you can ever find that limited edition, it's the best edition. Hands down. Arrow does like some really great editions of like a lot of stuff. This is actually my favorite place to be 
in the movie room now more than sitting down as I actually like this uh, you're safe to criteria so you're excited for the November sale then because I, I'm a hyper person and I, I like to stand up but uh but yeah like limited editions I mean I, I guess I get a few I gotta see what's limit what or like out of print stuff on screen factory I'm sure if some of the ones I got are probably out of print when I first started buying some screen factory if they had really nice artwork I would buy the DVD over the blu-ray because I uh, I did that with the howling because I just love the artwork for it oh yeah night beast ah uh, one thing you wow that was weird and creepy and freaky all right can anybody still see me Youch. So give me a second here. Because that. Here. There. Look there when I do this. So this. is a first that has never happened before what happened Kathy is my I walked and I'm gonna straighten this out afterwards too far well whoa oh, I walked too far over that way and when I did everything came coming came hurtling forward towards me I am hoping that my iPad is okay because if it's not my better half's gonna kill me because I already broke one iPad last year but yeah I have to use a mic that's the thing right I had a lot of complaints Logan unfortunately that people couldn't hear me so I uh, eventually gave in to the slave of the mic. Vincent Price collection number one. Yep. You ready? Time to go wireless. I thought about it. All right. So with that being said, and with that insanely craziness, oh no if my uh if this broke down I, I could not afford another one uh at this point then that would shut my channel for like a while <laughs> to be completely honest with you uh, I'd be doing much shorter videos and I'm doing them on my phone uh, the Vincent Price ones are AIP releases like kind of Corman stuff uh but uh like if you're looking for like good hammer sets check an indicator they're a great company uh, but I'm a little nervous about this here now so I'm gonna end the video so I can check my iPad and make sure everything's okay so that I can actually keep making videos here in the near future because I want to do the 31 days of live horror and I'm soon as Logan mentioned gonna be uh, in an earlier video gonna be listing what my 31 days of horror are gonna be I will try to give you the movies or at least give you the the themes but I'll try to give the movies but we'll have some fun with it <clears throat> anyway my name is Aaron this is my movie library that was my dramatic reenactment of earthquake or hurricane Dorian and uh, <laughs> you guys are the movie club you guys are awesome you rock if this is your first time coming in here uh, welcome you're now part of the movie club come back in hopefully to see you guys here uh, as much as possible uh, if you're a long time person I, I really really appreciate it uh, <clears throat> and because I'm I'm super new to this stuff I have to give my shout outs at the end of air so I'd like to give a shout out to uh, to uh, to cat lover to shadow to Chris to Joey to action Jackman to Dennis to Corey to Brian and to Ryan 
my uh, my Patreon like sponsors, who uh, thank you so much for that. I am super new and super nervous about that, uh, trying to figure all that stuff out. <laughs> anyway, thank you for uh, joining me today. Have a great evening. For me right now, it's time for tea and to make sure I didn't kill my iPad. Have a great evening there, guys. I will see you soon. <laughs>